Alright guys, YouTube fam, today we're going to talk about a tough subject that not everybody wants to talk about in the skateboard industry. Today I'm going to be talking about my experience on the things that I've seen and that I've come across throughout navigating the skateboard industry. First off, I want to mention that this is in no way talking down or representing negatively the skateboarding industry. I absolutely love skateboarding, it's a part of my heart, I'll never stop skating, but these are some truths that I've come across that I want to share with you guys. The first thing that I've noticed guys, it seems to me like the skateboard industry uh, is getting very much squeezed and the middle ground is getting squeezed out of what the skateboard industry used to be. Now there used to be tons of pro skaters making a decent living to at least get by and make do with who they were and what they did. Now as you know, skateboarding is a tough, tough thing to get good at. So personally, I believe every professional skateboarder and every skateboarder that has grown to a certain level deserves the utmost uh, respect and payment for the profession that they have created for themselves. But just like the economy these days, guys, the middle ground's getting squeezed out. It seems like less and less skateboarders are doing the thing that they love and make a living, and that's skateboarding. The rise of social media really the only real way to gain a lot of money and maybe interest from the skateboarding world is to grow your social media fan base, uh, which makes sense from a business perspective. The more hits and the more likes and the more numbers that you have, the more that that business knows that it will be getting that from you. But this also means that it has changed the way that skateboarding is being promoted and being sold and being marketed. So these days, roughly, a company does not have to pay you. They can send you free product, maybe send you on trips, but that doesn't mean that you're going to get paid for being a skateboarder yet. You might get some per diem while you're on the trip, but outside of that, you're not really going to come home with money. Now there's definitely exceptions to that rule. The top 10 or, you know, 15 skaters in the world might be getting a very honest living from skateboarding. And that's really only if they're supporting brands like energy drinks or food brands or any brands outside of skateboarding that can actually give them an honest wage for doing what they love. And that actually has a big budget to support something like that. As far as the skateboarding company and the skateboarding world goes, tons of skate companies, I can't tell you how much, and I don't even know the exact number, but I do know that it's you know, a good portion of them nowadays, guys, have been bought out by outside industries. So they aren't truly skater owned anymore or operated. Uh, the only reason that they're even still alive is because of these external entities that have pumped money into the brand and into skateboarding to try to get a piece of that money, which to be honest with you guys, there's not much left. The way things are moving these days, guys, skaters, uh, maybe the top tier skaters are getting all the money, whereas everybody else gets little to no money at all. Now, let me also say that that's not the reason that any of us do this. That's definitely not the reason why I started skating. But the truth of the matter is that there's less and less of it to go around these days, guys. And the guys that do have the money are holding that spot as long as they can, uh, rightfully so, because, you know, if they let it go and that money goes to somebody else, then that's it for them. Now, also, another truth that I've seen, which is a sad part of the industry right now, uh, is certain legends and pros that I grew up watching are now slowly coming to the realization that their money has run out. It's running dry, and there really isn't much money left for them or for much other skaters uh, as well. Now, this is sad to me, guys, because I grew up watching these guys. I idolize these guys. To see somebody with that longevity in an industry um, come to a point where they can no longer pay their bills or have a place to stay or they're sleeping on couches and floating from one place to the other. That's sad to me. That's like uh, LeBron James after X amount of time working in the NBA industry uh, can no longer pay for his bills. Now there's many factors to that. The way that they invested their money, the way that they used their money, and the way that they you know, uh, promoted and marketed them themselves along the way. But I still believe that it's a sad truth that many of our uh, industry pros and legends are slowly coming to the point where they have to take a regular job or do something totally different to even make it by in their life. Now one big thing guys, we do not have a union. Skateboarding is not unionized like the NBA or NFL or NHL probably too. Uh, 
uh, when you sign into these sports, you sign into their union. So you are somewhat protected by rules and guidelines, rules and regulations of uh, how much they get paid, when they get paid, um, they might have a severance package or things that will somewhat take care of them after they're gone from the league. Now in skateboarding, there is none of that. Uh, it is all roughly ran like the wild, wild west of, you know, whoever gets it has it and there is no rules and regulations on how much they pay or how they operate their business. Now, with the Olympics coming into play for 2020, uh, you know, I really hope that this will enhance everything for skateboarding and help uh, blow up everything that is current. But I am a little worried that, you know, this could potentially send us further down that trail of uh, skaters really only truly getting paid and being a professional skateboarder while you're competing in the Olympics. The best example that I've told other people is it's kind of like swimming. Um, you know, if, if you are an Olympic swimmer, you can't necessarily think that you are going to get tons of money from this sport. Now, you can be a professional Olympic swimmer while you're competing in the Olympics, but once your time in the Olympics is over, it's kind of over as far as you being a professional swimmer. Now, there's always exceptions to that, depending on what you do with your notoriety and momentum while you're in the Olympics. Uh, can definitely help propel you past that point. But what I wonder is, the further that we navigate into this area of skateboarding not being compensated as much as how it should be, it being in the national spotlight of the Olympics, I really wonder uh, how things are gonna pan out from there. Because to be honest, if I were a company, you know, it would only be smart for me to invest in a athlete in the Olympics while he's in the Olympics. Once he's out of the Olympics, it's not really smart for me to invest in him anymore. Now, as we know, guys, all my all my skaters that grew up in the 90s, 80s, early 2000s, you know, we grew up seeing this picture of skateboarding that, you know, it is this culture and it is this environment that, that you can build and create a life for yourself through this sport. But the way things are turning out now, guys, Unless you have a brand or you have some type of online presence, you're making videos, you're promoting videos, other than that, there's no reason for these brands to sponsor you. Now we all know skateboarding is a culture and it's always going to be this culture that's special to us, the people that do skateboard and, and actively practice the art form of skateboarding. These are one of the truths that I feel like I've come to realize and I've also seen throughout uh, living in Los Angeles and just navigating the skateboard industry is that there really is not much money to go around anymore guys and that's just the truth of it. So skateboarding as it is now is not exactly something that you can see as hey this is something I'm going to get rich off of. Now there's always exceptions to the rule, there's always uh, special people and special ideas that do heighten past what uh, the environment currently is. But generally, anybody who is just a great skateboarder is not exactly going to see tons of money from what this sport brings. Another sad truth of the industry, guys, as we all know, skaters are partiers. We love to have a good time, and we love to live a carefree lifestyle. But that also has been the detriment to tons of skaters out there. As we know with people like Antoine Dixon, uh, Andrew Reynolds, the Baker Crew, Ellington, uh, all the pissed drunks, you know, these guys were amazing at skateboarding, but the detriment of who they are in their careers was their alcohol and drug abuse. Now, a lot of these guys, I'm so psyched and so thankful that a lot of these guys are turning their lives around and being great positive examples to the world and to other skaters out there. But there's still a great number of skaters out there that are still struggling with drug and alcohol abuse, and nobody wants to talk about it. It's an unsaid, unheard of thing in the community. We are just now starting to hear about skaters turning the lives around and being positive influences for the community. The last truth that I've heard and that I've experienced myself is that there is a lot of stealing in the skateboard industry from ideas to names to tricks. You know, uh, there are tons of things and people that take other ideas from other people that aren't able to have the resources or the funds to make these things happen. Now this is true in so many other businesses guys, not just the skateboarding world. 
That's how it goes sometimes. The big shark eats the little shark because they can't do anything about it. Now, I'm not going to name any names, any specifics, but this is something that has actively been going on in the skateboard industry for quite some time. Another big factor in why things are changing tremendously in the skateboard industry is the way things are bought and sold and distributed. It used to be before that you had to go through a skate shop or a distributor to actually get these skateboard goods from the companies or from the brands that are selling these products. Nowadays, we have Instagram and we have websites and ways that we can distribute our own products, which is actually a great thing in certain respects, guys. But it is totally changing the way that the industry works. So places like Zoomies, PacSun, uh, things that are being sold online, all of these things play in a factor of how things are changing and how there's not as much money being uh, distributed around the skateboard industry. Skate shops that have been there for 10, 20 plus years are closing their doors now. Brands, distributors, so many important key factors to the skateboard industry that we had before are no longer needed and are no longer of value to people in these communities. They can just hop on Amazon, hop online, and get it shipped straight to their door without ever stepping in a skate shop or contacting a skate shop owner or distributor to get that product. I also want to add I absolutely love skateboarding and I'll never stop skateboarding. I'll always have skate schools and skate for fun, but as of now, the industry is changing tremendously, guys, and that is forcing people like myself and other skaters uh, into other endeavors. I'm diving into the acting world, guys. The acting world has scooped me up and brought me into it. It's something I've done my whole life, but it's slowly being something that I'm diving more into because it's bringing me into it. Other skaters are becoming uh, musicians, DJs, uh, entrepreneurs, other things that can actually sustain their lifestyle monetarily instead of skateboarding. And skateboarding is turning more into just a hobby and just something that we do for fun and to fill our spirit and the joy of getting on those four wheels. Another factor that's changing the industry, guys, is all the new technology available. Now, this is absolutely a great thing, but it's not such a great thing for the skateboarding. New things like hoverboards, scooters, electric scooters, uh, one wheels. There's all these new things and technologies that people are attaching onto instead of skateboarding still. Which from an environmental perspective is a great thing that we have these new electronic ways to get around. But unfortunately that means that there are less and less skateboards being bought and there's less money being pumped into the industry to keep it alive. To all my skaters out there, always keep skating and doing it for the love. There's nobody and nothing that can tell you not to skateboard. No matter if you get money or don't from it, you still need to do things that really lift your spirit and make you happy. So that's my piece guys. Those are the truths about skateboarding that I have come to see and I wanted to share with you guys. If you like this video, make sure you hit subscribe and notifications up top. Give me a thumbs up if you like this video and leave a comment below if you have any other ideas or any other truths that you want to share about your experience with the skateboarding industry. Thanks for watching guys. We'll see you on the next one.